Hello, we are crooked. Okay. Hello, Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I am a soil scientist. On this channel, we take that science and we apply it to gardening and plant care. So if you want to know more about the science of gardening and plants in general, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and join this awesome crew. So every once in a while, I like to do a little bit of a crowd shout out because I have some followers that are literally on the comments and on that like button like nobody's business and one of those very special individuals is the mighty moustache so i will leave a link down below to his youtube channel he is a youtuber um and this guy has 150 peppers he's got pepper trees which is insane and there's even some footage of him eating I think it's, is it a ghost pepper? I can't remember. I'd never do it. You're a brave soul. So um, be sure to check him out. And for the rest of you, thank you so much. None of you are forgotten. So you are all in the back of my heads. And I want to thank you so much for all the comments and all the likes. This is insane, you guys. Um, every comment, every like, even if it's just a smiley face, helps me kind of come out of the algorithm like crazy. And you know, there's other people who appreciate it as well because I'm getting contacted by folks who just are finding my channel and they are saying, hallelujah, thank you YouTube for suggesting this on my homepage because I want to know the science. So you're not just helping me, you are helping others as well. So thank you so much. But today we're gonna get into the science of peat moss and I, I'm excited for this because, well, I'm excited for everybody. Let's get real. <laughs> um, but this one I'm really excited for. And the reason being is it is so Canadian. It's not even like when we're talking about the supply for North America, so Canadian. So I'm going to go through exactly what peat moss is from how it's made, designed, and even harvested. And then I'm going to get into the environmental impacts of using peat moss at the rate we're using it at. <laughs> Skip over that if you don't like bummers. And then we're gonna get into why exactly gardeners decided to use it and kind of what it does for the garden and why we decide to use it. And then we're going to end off with how to properly apply peat moss to your garden. Yep, it's gonna be good. So let's get into it. I'm excited about this because it's about the soil and that's kind of my mo is the soil because everything starts with the ground for me peat moss is a moss that does not have to be specifically sphagnum but sphagnum is kind of the common moss that's used in this product but there's many different kinds and they actually come out of bogs in canada and if i'm talking to an american which 50% ish of you are 80% of the peat moss that you guys get in the United States comes from a Canadian wetland or a Canadian bog or marsh. So that's a fun fact. 80% of peat moss used in America, whether it's just straight peat moss or in potting soil mix that is from Canada. So that is actually kind of cool, but they were basically deposited in depressions in the ground. So as the glacier was retreating, it would pick up pieces of earth that were boulders and these boulders would kind of spin and rumble around in the bottom of the glacier and it would carve away at the bedrock. The Canadian shield, which is straight bedrock, which is kind of higher up in the profile in the boreal forest areas, um, Ontario, Manitoba, you're more likely to see bedrock on a regular basis than someone in Saskatchewan or well, I was gonna say Alberta, but you got the friggin' mountains. But uh, in Saskatchewan, for example, you have to go really far north before you start hitting bedrock um, up around kind of that Larange area. So what would happen is these boulders would work away at the bedrock and it would leave a basin. This basin would fill with water and then vegetation would come on top of that. Because there's no water feeding that basin, whether it be through a creek or a river, it is a closed system that doesn't have a lot of fresh water movement 
other than just groundwater or natural runoff. That means, since there's no flowing water, that the sphagnum moss was never aerated. It caused an anaerobic environment. This anaerobic environment means that the moss never really decomposes and it kind of just stays in this half decomposed dead state. That is what peat moss is, is it's technically just dead moss. It's not quite yet, you know, a fully decomposed organic material, but at the same time, it's not alive either. It's kind of in between. Actually really cool fact, I wish I had photos of it, but we took a forest soils course in university and we would have to dig soil profile pits in bogs, in peat moss bogs. And they would look like grass, it would look completely flat, completely normal, like you could just walk out into it or run across it. But the moment you stepped on it, you'd sink. So depending on how fluffy or how old that bog was, you may sink up to your knees, your shins, or it may just kind of come over top of your shoe. When you stepped on it, the water would kind of flood into its place because peat moss or moss in general can hold up to 20 times its weight in water. That's what makes it so valuable to gardeners. Now you're probably wondering, well, how, how does it get in a, a bag and in, into my garden? Well, it's mined. So Essentially what happens is the top layer of the peat, so the live layer, is taken off and it's put into a donor area. That donor area is kind of left to thrive on its own and grow and accumulate more growth over time. There's going to be a reason for that in the future. But in the meantime, we have kind of a stripping mechanism that goes across the tops of the peat moss and it harvests the peat moss in layers. Peat moss bogs can be meters deep, so sometimes it can last up to 20 years as a mining site. This is then completely removed, but what the Canadian government realized was that this peat moss bog has been there since glaciation has receded, and now we're just ripping it off for gardeners. What's putting it back in its place? So thank the heavens or the indigenous peoples of Canada because they already knew that these areas were sacred and incredibly important to Mother Earth and just nature in general as an ecosystem. And they said, you're gonna have to fix this. You can't just leave it as an open gutted mine. So the Canadian government thought, yeah, you're right. We have to do something about this. That's where the donor pile comes into effect. The donor pile is then put into usually a manure spreader it is chopped up into tiny pieces and broadcasted all over the existing bog area. Then professional ecologists will come in and they'll monitor things like the hydrological cycle, the native plant populations, just to make sure it doesn't dry out too much, it doesn't get too wet, and that kind of a homeostasis is achieved and brought back. Now for that bog to kind of achieve a level where we can forget about it, that's kind of up for debate. Um, there's one party that says five to 20 years, it's completely good, it's fine. And then there's another group of people that are like, no, it's never the same. It doesn't even look the same, let alone function the same in the environment, which I can believe because we're talking about taking resources from something that's been around for literally thousands of years and then trying to throw it together in 20 I mean yes yeah, it's, it's not going to be the same I don't I'm not in that field but I just can't see it you know going back tickety boo but that's just me that's just me um but they do reclaim it to a point that it is functioning and it can be harvested again <laughs> in years to come because that's exactly what they do do is they will go back to that bog in however many years and kind of reharvest it. This product is then shipped to places like Sun Grow Horticulture, Pro Mix, Miracle Grow, anyone who has a potting soil mix or any sort of sphagnum moss mix. They then chew it up really, really fine so it kind of looks like those little hairs. And then that is what is brought to your front door. Now, you may notice some potting soils have sticks and twigs in them. This has to do more so with the manufacturing company because everyone is going to get sphagnum that's going to have sticks in it because it is a part of a forest system. Um, so that's just natural. They're not going to decompose, 
but it's up to how the manufacturer decides to deal with those sticks. So whether they filter them out or sift them out or manually pick them out, depending on how much ends up on your doorstep. Now, what triggered a gardener to even think of putting this in a potting soil or in the garden in general? Well, it comes down to two things, two main factors, the ability to hold moisture and the increase of the cation exchange capacity. So we talked about the moisture, it can actually increase its holding capacity by 20 times the weight of the product. That is insane. That means it is going to deliver an even supply of moisture to your plant all year round. That is really key if you're wanting even luscious growth, whether it's for vegetables or for flowers. That's why it's so valuable. The second one is the cation exchange capacity. And I talked about this in kind of my soil science videos. The cation exchange capacity has nothing to do with the nutrients available in the soil itself, but everything to do with its ability to hold nutrients. So the same reasons why the indigenous people realize the importance of this bog in the environment is the same reason gardeners use it in their pots. It has the ability to hold on to stuff. It has the ability to filter out toxins. Any sort of toxin can be actually held in the peat moss and not leached into the water systems or into the plant systems. But on the other hand, it's really good at holding on to vital nutrients for the plant and then delivering it to the plant over time. This is so valuable because the only other substrate that is able to provide this reaction or this uh, physics or chemistry to a plant is actually clay. And as we know, clay can become very compacted and the porosity can shrink a lot. But with peat moss, we actually have a really good balance of airflow as long as we don't fully saturate it and just kind of porosity in general. We have an even amount of everything. And that's why it is so valuable to gardeners. The other reason it is incredibly valuable to gardeners is because it has an acidic profile. So its pH is running around a 4.4 on average. This 4.4 means it is really good at reducing the pH in your soil naturally. I add it to my flower beds every single year. It is going to bring that alkaline soil that's up around the eights or greater, seven or greater, and it's gonna help it bring it down closer to seven or maybe even a bit below seven, which may be what you want in the case of African violets or blueberries, for example. It has to do with that nutrient chart that I always show that has all the different nutrients when they're available at what pHs. So if you're ever asked or you're ever wondering, well, how do I bring my pH down? Peat moss is a really good solution for that. It's naturally gonna bring it down and it's not gonna falsely bring it down for a day like vinegar would. It's going to permanently or relatively permanently bring that pH down to more an acidic level which is what, what delivers a different nutrient profile to the plant. This acidity is also really valuable because it actually helps suppress fungus and bacterial growth, which is why it is really commonly used in seed starters or the peat pods. Um, it has to do with the fact that it is acidic and it's moisture retaining properties, but because of its acidity, it's less likely to get mold and fungus on it if you are able to manage the water and the kind of the airflow around that product. Now, what does this mean? Well, as a gardener, it's really simple. It's up to us to do our research and see where our products are coming from. So if you didn't know where peat moss came from or you had no idea that it wasn't a sustainable product, then make sure you give this video a thumbs up and drop me a comment below. I'd love to know exactly if any other influencers have ever talked about this or anyone has ever kind of brought this to your attention. What you can do as a gardener to support the Canadian bogs, whether you're American or Canadian, is buy, buy your products only when you need to. That means reuse your potting soil if you can. I reuse my potting soil. I have a video on exactly how to replenish that soil and how to reuse it every year. I know there's a lot of people out there that push for the best that money can buy when it comes to potting soil, but that's simply just not sustainable. It's the same thing as if you could buy the biggest and the best cell phone every year. Of course you can do it, but should you? That's up to you. 
So as a gardener, what you can do to make this more sustainable is reuse that potting soil every year, draw awareness to the fact that this is not they, honestly, there's a lot of there's a lot of studies and a lot of people coming out saying that this is not a sustainable um, mining activity and that you know it's gonna run out eventually. I don't know what the stats on that is. I don't know if that is the case. I'm not up there in the field. I'm not seeing this go on. Um, if there is anyone that works in like the peat moss mining industry and they can weigh in on this I'd actually love to hear leave a comment below DM me whatever you whatever the case is but um, I do think this is a really important PSA I think it's really important to draw attention to the fact that this is a very valuable product for gardeners and as gardeners it is important that we kind of take all the facts we digest what we learn and then we kind of put it out there for beginners and experts um, to kind of do our hobby in a sustainable way. Um, we ask hobbyists all over the world to do their job in a way that is going to last a long time. And I think it's our duty to do the same. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun just researching and watching enormous amounts of clips of peat moss bog mines. I don't, I thought it was cool. The machine, anyways, um, that might just be me. <laughs> It probably is just me, but whatever. I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment below and hit that subscribe button if this is the type of channel you enjoy. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Hello, Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. I don't have my mic in. Damn it. Sometimes I just get so excited about doing the videos.